Steven Seagal recently went to the uh, the the Russian prison where Ukrainian prisoners of war were being held. I know I haven't been like covering the Ukrainian invasion as much, but I've still been keeping up with it. And this is a really important time to bring this back uh, for all of you to to pay attention to. Now, this uh, prisoner of war uh, facility held by uh, Russians where the Ukrainian prisoners of war were being held was bombed. And all the prisoners were eviscerated, okay? Now, the Ukrainians claim that uh, Russians did it to themselves because they were torturing the prisoners of war in there and they wanted to hide the evidence. And the uh, Russians claimed that it was Ukrainians doing it. Steven Seagal, on the other hand, of course, for those of you who don't know, my favorite uh, actor slash political advocate, political activist. Okay. <laughs> Steven Seagal has some thoughts. I mean, we are in Yelenevka, as I have said, in the exact place where HIMARS came in, killed. Now, the reason why they're saying it's HIMARS is if they are actually HIMARS that caused the damage, then the likelihood that it was Ukraine bombing this spot is, uh, is higher. So not only is he... Not only is he there to investigate the situation, he's also there to do propaganda. Okay. HIMARS are uh, the targeting system slash uh, the weapon systems that we are sending to Ukraine right now as well, and it's one that they've been using. Um, so I'll just say this. <laughs> Steven Seagal is out of mind, <laughs> okay? He's the Russian Dennis Rodman. I mean, he's, just, he's there to solve problems, <laughs> okay? I can't believe he's doing this. What a f insane person. Who views Steven Seagal as the voice of authority? Uh, me. I'm just saying, if you were wondering, like, what uh, international superstar Steven Seagal has been up to, this is what he's been up to, okay? 50 people wounded another 70 people. The interesting thing is that one of the Nazis that was killed is a Nazi that was just starting to talk a lot about Zelensky and Zelensky being responsible for ordering torture uh, and other atrocities uh, that violate not only the Geneva Convention of War, but also our That's an interesting analysis, Steven Seagal. Why would you know this? Sir, Mr. Seagal, why would you have access to this information? He's just suspicious is all. Is he, is he conducting the investigation? Was he doing the... Was he the one torturing the Ukrainian POVs? Or POWs, sorry. How does he have knowledge? How does he have access to this? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, are there guns pointed at him now? No, he does this willingly. Are you kidding me? It's just, it's just odd. Are crimes against humanity. So if Zelensky was being implicated in crimes against humanity, I wonder if that's why this guy got rocketed and killed. Just wondering. I'm not going to lie. Russia should almost exclusively use Steven Seagal going forward when delivering their, their, uh, their POV. Okay. It's so good. I mean, this is like at first you're like, well, this is ridiculous. I can't believe this happened. How dare they do this? How dare Russia do this? And then Steven Seagal comes in and he starts talking about how like, Ugh, it's crazy. They almost found the truth about Zelensky. He's gay. And then they got rocketed. And, and uh, b before you know it, you're like, well, okay, this is a much better presentation. You know what I mean? If I were to, if I'm looking at Lavrov, it's not, it's not as sexy. If I'm looking at, if I'm looking at Steven Seagal describing the situation, I'm, I'm, I'm inclined to believe him. <laughs> They're ridiculous.
If you look at the structure from the outside and the inside, it sure looks like a rocket or a missile to me. If you look at uh, the beds and all of the stuff like that, this is certainly not a bomb. So, and not to mention that uh, the Russian government now does have a lot of um, uh, artifacts from the HIMARS. So, let's check his fit though. He's rocking, he's rocking the Mao Summer Collection. Oh, yeah, he is. Now, here's a guy you can't say, oh, how the mighty has fallen. Because I don't think he was ever on top. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, this was always... In some ways, this was a, a wonderful, uh, I, I would say, horizontal movement in his career. Oh, <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ, dude. Everyone's talking about HIMARS. Meanwhile, no one is talking about Russia deploying me, Steven Seagal. That's right. <laughs> After I'm done with them. They'll be calling Western Ukraine Donbass. I'm going in there to deal with matters. I'm taking matters into my own hands. I told Vlad, we go by first name. I told him, why stop at the Dnieper River? Why not go forward? At least he's doing something interesting with his career. A lot of washed up actors, okay? What do a lot of washed up actors do? They, they get drunk and then they say like a bunch of anti-Semitic shit and, you know, they've never forgiven uh, the Jews for the original sin. You know what I mean? And then like, oops, all of a sudden, you know exactly what's going on in their minds about uh, uh, Jewish people, right? And then they stay quiet and then come back a couple years later and everyone acts like that never happened. You know what I mean? Meanwhile, what's Steven Seagal doing? Okay. Propaganda for Russia. At least that's entertain. That's content. That's content. Can't deny it. Mel Gibson, no content. Last time, last time Mel Gibson did content was the, the, the phone calls. It was either this or NFTs. I mean, yeah. Seagal's a good man. He's hard to kill. Even though he's under siege by all this communists on the left, he continues to stand on deadly ground because he is out for justice. And these Ukrainian Nazis are not above the law. And our hero Segal will save the day, even though he is the foreigner over there. He's not the foreigner over there. Uh, famously, Steven Segal believes that he is. Um, I think as recently they they asked him like, "Where are you from?" in in an interview, and I remember him saying, uh, "He's from Asia." Like the continent. You know how people say like, people that don't know any countries in Africa will say like, oh, the Africa, you know? Like they'll act like Africa is like not a continent, but one country. He said that. They asked him where he's from. And he said, my homeland is Asia. Oh, wait. My sources are confirming that he is also selling NFTs. <laughs> oh, no. Steven Seagal is from Asia. He's like, you know, a 11th generation Irishman claiming Irish lineage, okay? Oh my God! Does this mother claim Turkic background? Is he is he saying? Wait, no. He's saying I'm from the steppes. I'm I'm Mongolian. No, he's not. Is he? Oh my God! Oh my God! Okay, well I have to admit he he has he has some right ideas. Okay. Wait, he's Siberian? Wait, you can't... Wait, what? Two weeks after collecting his passport from Vladimir Putin, Hollywood actor discloses intriguing DNA in his family tree. The star told how he hopes that... Dude, I love wearing jeans with this shirt on top. God, he's so dripped out. You have to forgive him. He's from New Jersey. 
And everyone that has the decency to lie about not being from New Jersey while they're actually from New Jersey searches desperately for another country or even state to associate with. What have I always said on this broadcast? New Jer no one is actually from New Jersey. If you're from South Jersey, you lie and say you're from Philadelphia. If you're from North Jersey, you lie and say you're from New York. Okay? And that's the saddest thing because, like, at least New York is cool. But can you imagine a state so bad that people lie and say they're from Philadelphia? That they're from Pennsylvania? Think about that. Think about how devastating it is. So, of course, he's going to desperately seek other uh, forms of lineage and say... Oh, I'm actually from uh, Siberia. I'm actually from, uh, I'm a Mongolian, uh, Russian Jew. That's how it works. Central Jersey exists? That doesn't exist. No one is from New Jersey. Only people from Central Jersey, if it were to exist, would claim that they're from New Jersey and claim that they are from Central Jersey. But no such thing exists, so therefore, no one is actually from New Jersey. They're either from New York or Pennsylvania. It's a beautiful camp. I'm a Russian Mongol, and I'm Russian. My father was a Russian Mongol, so these people are Russian Mongols, so I'm paying homage to them and their culture and my culture. What is that hat? What is that hat he's wearing? Guys, stop talking about how he also has a, a, a ponytail and the same glasses that I'm wearing. Okay, can we just stop? Can we stop mentioning that, please? No, I did not. Uh, dedicate my entire career to looking like Steven Seagal, okay? Can you just stop with that nonsense, okay? You got the Yankee with no brim. All right. There's nothing wrong with wearing a like a gi and then also wearing jeans underneath the gi and a Yankee with no brim. Yes, it is part of my culture. My, I'm Russian. I'm uh, love this country. Love the people. As this broadcast goes on, you're gonna find out a lot about me and my connection to Steven Seagal. It's gonna make you feel Coffee a certain type of way. Okay. Make no mistake. Steven Seagal has never done anything wrong, and I totally am on board with everything he's said. Charlize Theron slams Steven Seagal as overweight, unable to fight, and not very nice to women. I think that is uh, putting it lightly, okay? From what I understand, Steven Seagal is not just mean to women. I, I'm pretty sure he's, like, you know, assaulted them, okay? Um, but, of course, he's above the law because... Uh, <laughs> What are you going to do? Go to Russia and arrest them? No. There you go. Charlize is a good judge on this as she's at every single UFC at, in the front row. Wait, what? Really? Steven Seagal looks like he smells like a bowling alley. <laughs> oh, I love that. Remember Hassan Piker? Feel old yet? Okay, stop. Stop it. Listen, all I'm going to say is this, okay? You guys are making fun of me by comparing me to Steven Seagal. And that's a W to me, okay? So there you go. He's my hero.